Hi guys. Hey, we want to do our update, real estate market update and what is happening. I'm Lisa. I'm Gary. And we want to start with buyers. You know, there's a powerful job market and the unemployment numbers came out and unemployment is at a 50 year record low at 3.4%. And what that is helping to do is to support the buyers in the real estate market because they are uh, employed and substantially employed so they are back in the marketplace um, contrary to popular belief or the headlines <laughs> yeah if you know somebody looking for a job there should be one out there for them uh-huh uh, according to showing time which is an app that the a the agents use the the buyer activity looking at property is up to pre-pandemic levels it is and one of the things that has happened um, in april is the fact that normally about half a million homes come on the market this year we're a hundred thousand home life there's only about four hundred thousand homes that came on the market so very few properties so you see the headlines are all saying you know oh the sales are off the sales are off well the sales numbers are off because the inventory coming on the market is less because what we're seeing in the market here is multiple offers the house is uh, priced right it is getting multiple offers. Priced right and ready to go. Yeah, Either that's way. right. So we are seeing traffic. There's a lot of traffic at the open houses. There are offers and there are more buyers in the market than sellers. So what does that mean? That means there are too many buyers chasing too few properties. What does that do? Pushes the price up every time. The price change in our area from March to April prices went up 7%. So all these people that have been waiting for the market to crash and prices to crash, we've heard that for what, 10 years? Yes. 10 years, prices are crashing, the market is crashing. Well, we haven't see, seen it yet and prices are up again. Can you believe 7% mm -hmm. in 30 days? Mm -hmm. So that's a factor really of supply and demand of inventory. So if you're thinking about selling a home, now's the time. If you wanna be uh, out in the marketplace and, and not have a lot of competition, now's the time. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And you know, everyone's talking about recession, recession. Well, that certainly hasn't been what, what we have seen here. Just to be clear, we are not in a recession at this time. Mm-hmm, yeah. So the best time to sell your house is when other people aren't selling because then it makes yours stand out more. That's kind of like right now. Mm-hmm. So let's see, we talked about that. Uh, yeah, a recent survey from realtor.com says that 56% of people who are planning to sell in the next 12 months were waiting for rates to come down. Well, rates have bounced around somewhat, but it seems the buyers are getting used to the numbers. And I think it's true like when you buy a car or you buy a house, you really are concerned about the payment. You know, how much is gonna cost me every month? And I think the buyers are over their sticker shock and they're back in the market trying to buy a home. It's, can I afford it or can I not afford it? Mm-hmm. Inventory levels are at historic lows. So what are the, the rates now? Well, rates are running about six and a half, um, bouncing up a little bit uh, up and down from there, but they got as high as over 7%, but we're seeing them back around six. I've seen some of our buyers come through their approval le uh, letters and they're actually in the high fives. That's right. Now we're talking about owner occupied properties, yes. not investment properties, which mm -hmm. investment properties are always higher. Mm -hmm. According to Black Knight, which is another data provider 83.74 so 84 percent of all mortgage volumes last week was purchased transactions and followed by 14 percent cash out refis and only 2.36 percent a rate or term uh refi which i think you probably assume but there's the numbers yes <laughs> we've got um, the numbers we just came from the um, fisher client investment lunch in person for the first time in three years. Uh, we really enjoyed these luncheons over the years. It's always great to see everyone in person and to hear them come and give us a roadshow with what's happening in the overall economy because we follow the real estate market and the headlines you know, very closely every day, but not necessarily get the deep dive that we get at these luncheons. And so it was really great. Well, they send out their best people. In fact, one of the guys they sent out is on one of their commercials at Fisher Investments. And yeah, and he was great. I mean, they did an excellent job. So the presentation, here it is. It was very in-depth on the economy. But some of the highlights for me um, 
we're talking about the debt ceiling. So now it's all in the news right now and the headlines and the drama about the debt ceiling and they explained it and there were several questions about this after the presentation. So I thought you guys might have questions too. So they're talking about the debt ceiling, but what really matters is, is the USA's ability to repay their debts. So they showed a chart that's actually not it in this book, but when they answered the question, they showed it on the screen that the debt payments in relation to the revenue that the US brings in is about 9.7% of the US revenue taxes that goes toward our debt payments. So the US can afford to pay them. So they were prepared for the question. For yeah, sure. very much. I mean, when people asked a, a, a question, boom, they had a slide. <laughs> yes, they did. So they kind of knew what the questions were going to be. Yeah, I have a feeling that as they go around the country with this roadshow, that the questions probably fall into certain categories. And that was definitely one of the questions. Yeah, they also brought up the 14th Amendment. It says in the 14th Amendment that the U.S. won't default on, on their debts. So they have to shuffle things around sometimes, but they do make their debt payments. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then another thing they talked about, then there were some questions on this too, was the bank failures and the banking crisis that wasn't. They talked in specifically about Silicon Valley Bank, that their depositors and the reason they were in trouble is when they use a lot of venture money, that they lose money, lose money, lose mo money new startups do, and where do they have to get influxes of cash to cover that as they're starting up new companies? Well, since Silicon Valley Bank is concentrated in that world, people started pulling out their cash and they were exposed and it's a problem. <laughs> Yeah, it was basically, it turned out to be a run on the bank. In fact, when First Republic Bank, uh, they got bought out by J.P. Morgan. They still closed First Republic Bank, but J.P. Morgan bought out the assets. They were, people were withdrawing about $10 million a day out of that bank. So it was basically a run on the bank that took both those banks down. Mm -hmm. They talked about, there's some slides too that show that the big banks are really in good shape financially, that they have 119% of, assets to what they need uh, so and there's plenty of backstops is what they're saying that it's not going to collapse the economy which is what the headlines seem to keep saying it's going to happen but i want to close with lisa got a quote from warren buffett yes it is they gave they said market the market is a vehicle to transfer wealth from the inpatient to the patient warren yeah. Buffett. <laughs> yeah i would think the same thing holds in true in real estate stocks equities real estate, be patient. Yeah, there's one more ex uh, example or illustration that they used that I loved, and it was talking about the Federal Reserve and the economy, that the economy is the dog and the Federal Reserve is the tail. So really the economy is robust and in good shape, and it's moving along, and people want to think the Federal Reserve has control of the dog, but that's not, you, that's not really the case. The Federal Reserve is the tail and reacts to what the dog is doing. <laughs> GaryandLisa.com. Your real estate edge.